Dr. Andrew K. Stein, Mad Scientist, Book 1, Lunchbox Among Us, Chapter 9, Lunch Doesn't Agree With Me. The next day at school, while the kids were doing their math problems, Miss Shirley took Fanny over to one side and talked to her. How's the experiment going? She asked. It's great. I understand them, and I think we're becoming friends. They seem to like me better if I just go along with the things they like. Are you sure that's for the best? Miss Shirley asked. Well, that's what the data seem to suggest, Franny said, and she showed Miss Shelby some graphs to back it up. But I like the real you, Miss Shelley was about to continue, when a piercing scream tore through the room. The trash can, a little girl shrieked. It's moving. Franny's mad scientist brain raced. That was the trash can in which she had dumped her crab ravioli and pumpkin sauce two days ago. But an old lunch, all by itself, is not enough to start a paranormal reaction. Who else put something in that can? Franny said. I spit out my gum in there, one girl said. I threw a pair of old gym shoes in there. Another boy said. I saw the janitor dumping some trash in there, another girl said. Egad, said Franny. That was close. Well, as long as nobody put any unstable industrial waste in there, we should be fine. Oh yeah, said one little boy. I forgot. I put some unstable industrial waste in there. Gadzooks, Frane shouted. That is the exact formula for a giant monstrous fiend. The other kids looked at her. They looked scared, not just at the mention of a giant monstrous fiend, although the prospect of a giant monstrous fiend was no comfort. They were also afraid of Frane. They were looking at her the way they used to before they had become her friends. I mean, Franny stammered, that's what I would think if I was a weird mad scientist type little girl, which of course I'm not. They all smiled at her again. Just then the trash can erupted like a volcano. As the smoke settled, the kids saw, for the first time, the type of giant monstrous fiend that a mad scientist type girl would have predicted. Chapter 10 That's No Jack O' Lantern. The giant monstrous fiend stood there chewing gum and breathing angrily. Its head was a pumpkin, and its body looked like a crab's. It was wearing the old shoes and it was just dripping with industrial waste. Franny hoped it would just jump out the window and go away, and to her surprise, the pumpkin crab monster jumped out the window and went away. Unfortunately, it grabbed Miss Shelley before it left. With a crash and a scream, the pumpkin crab monster and her teacher were gone. The kids just stood there. They didn't know how to help. A few tried crying. A few tried screaming. One tried wetting his pants, although later on he admitted he had no idea why he thought that might help. Some of Franny's new friends hugged her and shrieked, but Franny didn't shriek. Franny thought. Out the window, the pumpkin crab monster was climbing the flagpole with Miss Shelley. There was no way that Miss Shelley was going to get away from that monster thing. It was holding her tight, and it was climbing higher and higher. Fratney looked at her friends. 
she really liked them, and she was happy they liked her. But still, she knew what she had to do. Fratney reached into her backpack and pulled out a vial. It said antidote on it. Uh, guys, she said gently, if you all get your lunches, I think I know what we might be able to do. The kids ignored her. They just ran around in little circles, getting more and more scared and confused. Guys, really, I think I know what we need. Franny spoke a little louder this time, but they still ignored her. We need a fireman, one girl said. We need a superhero, one boy said. We need dry pants, said you know who. Franny stood up. Outside, lightning cracked. What we need, she said, is a mad scientist, which I am. She uncorked the antidote and drank it. She began to cough and sputter and spit. She fell on the ground and scrunched down in a little ball. She stood up and felt herself return to normal. Frane, the little girl mad scientist, was back.